Hello, and thank you for joining Jim Environmental on our second book reading of Women in Science by Rachel Ignowski. It's about 50 women in science, and we are on the second and third chapter. So I'm just going to jump right in and get started. So Maria Sibylla Marian, scientific illustrator and entomologist. Born in Germany in 1647, Maria Marian combined science and art to become one of the greatest scientific illustrators of all time. In the 1600s, Europeans did not have a basic understanding of insects. Most people thought they were simply disgusting and not worth careful study. Maria could not have disagreed more. At a young age, she started collecting insects to study how they behaved. Her stepfather taught her how to use paint, which she used to illustrate the different stages of her favorite insects' lives. Maria was particularly interested in butterflies. At the time, no one really understood the connection between caterpillars and butterflies. In 1679, she published a book on metamorphosis, filled with scientific notes and illustrations. Then Maria's life changed drastically. She left her husband and took her mother and two daughters to Holland. They joined a strict religious group that had ties with a Dutch colony in South America called Suriname. This mismanaged religious group fell apart, but Maria's interest in Suriname stayed with her. Curious about new insects, at the age of 52, Maria braved the rainforest of South America. She documented never before seen bugs in the face of dangerous rain and heat. Unfortunately, her trip ended early when she con contracted malaria, but she had already made the illustrations she needed to create her greatest book, The Metamorphosis of Insects of Suriname, was published in 1705 and became a hit all over Europe. Maria's work helped future scientists to classify and understand insects, and her beautiful detailed illustrations amaze and educate people to this day. So as always, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see Rachel's amazing illustrations. Feel free to pause if you needed a little bit more time to look at them. And the quotes around say, one of the first and most important entomologists, classified many new insect species, carefully illustrated the metamorphosis of a butterfly. And then the little quote says, art and nature shall always be wrestling until they eventually conquer one another so that the victory is the same stroke in line. Maria Marian. <clears throat> and then the other quotes say, people thought Maria loved bugs because her mom visited an insect collection while pregnant. People used to call insects the beasts of the devil. Maria observed and painted live insects while others observed only dead ones in the display case. People used to think insects would spontaneously appear in garbage like magic. Maria's portrait was on German money and stamps. Cocoons were once called date pits in Germany. She handled poisonous bugs in the rainforest. So Maria was amazing, and I think it's also impressive that she decided to branch out and um, at the age of 52 go into rainforest to do this. And I think a lot of people think you either have to be um, young or in the middle age to do that, but I think 52 um, really just shows that, because in that time, you know, in the 1647, that was very old. Um, and so I think that it just kind of shows that ageism is also something that we can just, it's just, another way to keep people out of science and to not listen to it. It doesn't matter what age you are, you can always go and do something that you find important and that you're passionate about. Okay, um, so now we're gonna read our chapter three, which is Wang Jenny, astronomer, poet, and mathematician. Wang Jenny was one of the greatest scholars in China. She was born in 1768 during the Xing Dynasty. At the time, China had a strict feudal system Education was available only for the wealthy, and women were expected to cook, sew, and not be bothered by studies. Wang Jenny was fortunate to be born into a family of scholars who valued her education. Her grandfather and father taught her astronomy and math. She also traveled extensively and saw how extreme taxation affected the less fortunate. Learning about the harshness of poverty inspired her to write poetry, decrying injustice. In Wang Jinny's day, eclipses were considered mysterious and beautiful, but were not well understood. But she had theories about how they worked, and she created her own eclipse model using a mirror, a lamp, and a globe that she tied up with ropes around a table. She used it to prove her theories about how the moon blocks out views of the sun, 
or the Earth blocks the sun's light from reaching the moon during an eclipse. And there were more planetary problems to solve. Wang Jinny scientifically studied the Chinese calendar system and used her telescope to measure the stars and further explain the rotation of the solar system. She was also a dedicated math mathematician. Her struggles with math would often make her stop and sigh, but she pushed through those tough moments. She understood complicated arithmetic theories and at the age of 24, published a five volume guide for beginners called Simple Principles of Calculation. This work compiled six years after Wang Jinni's death was pre prefaced by the famous scholar Qian Yiji and read by many. Wang Jinni lived only to be age 29, but she's remembered as one of the greatest minds of the, of the Xing dynasty. She published, many, she published many volumes of writing on math, astronomy, and poetry, and her work influenced legions of scientists, mathematicians, and writers who came after her. So here are the illustrations. I'm going to read the little quotes. It says, wrote political poetry about injustice, wrote papers explaining trigonometry and the principles of the multiplication and division, and division accurately recorded lunar eclipses and equinoxes. It's made to believe women are the same as men. Are you not convinced daughters can also be heroic? And that is part of um, Wang Jinny's poetry. Loved her grandfather's huge library of books, understood that the earth was round and described it as a ball, learned from Western and Eastern calendars, was accomplished in archery and horseback riding, explained eclipses in her paper, the dispute of the um, procession of the equinoxes, updated the count and placement of the stars, developed her own arguments on gravity, wrote commentaries on the Pythagorean theorem and other trigonomic studies. So I think she is amazing and she did this all before age 29. But one of the things that I really respect about her is that she loved astronomy, poetry, and math. And she didn't just pick one, she pursued all of them. Um, I think a lot of people feel like you can either have the logical mind or the creative mind, but these women show that you can have both and that you need both to be an amazing scientist. So um, I hope that you comment below what you like, maybe share your own passions or um, if you're kind of left and right brained in a way, uh, please feel free to write about that as well. We kind of want to learn about you. Um, and if you have any questions, as always, gym representatives will try to get back to you as soon as possible. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our um, next science experiment. Have a great day.